Hi everybody, my name is Ari, hello, um, and today I'm going to be going over some books that I've read for the first time in, in the year of 2019. Uh, there are some, some of these books I've had longer, but I've never really gotten around to reading them in full. Um, I'm going to start with two books that I, I don't have with me right now. One of them I got from the library, the other one I, uh, it's not really a, like, I can't really show it in print without it being difficult. So number one is for, finally, I have gotten around to reading Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Um, I will definitely look to read Through the Looking Glass sometime in the next year, but it just... I cannot believe I've gone almost all my life without reading that book. So my mom just told me that uh, off camera that uh, we had a version of Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass uh, from the 1950s, which um, I didn't know I had when I got Alice in Wonderland from the library, but here it is. This is what it looks like. Um, it's from my, my mom's, uh, my grandfather's sister gave it to my mom and um, it also is through the looking glass I didn't realize we had it so I guess the first book I'm going to read in 2020 is through the looking glass absolutely uh, I'm going to um, check that out for sure but what I was saying about Alice in Wonderland is that it's so whimsical it's so I, I just can't believe I've gone almost all my life without reading it and considering it was here in the house it's a bit sad on my end you can. But um, I, I had only seen the movies with uh, the Tim Burton movies. I had not seen and I actually read the books and they are a little bit different. They're not quite the same, but I could see where a lot of the characters kind of fit into popular culture. And I, I think I really liked the written version of the um, several of the characters, including the Mad Hatter. Um, but... I will give you a more full review when I read through the looking glass, which I now have every motive to do so quicker than I was before, because I now realize I have a copy of the book. So that was number one, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Number two is just a small, um, it's a book, it's not even a book, it's a Bible story. And I think it's, it's, it's quite interesting how this story works out. It's called the Book of Job. And, and I felt that because this is technically written material, and since written work is game, I'd go over a little bit of it. But it's basically Job sells his soul to Satan. And, and, and it's, it's if, if, even if you are not a religious person, this is probably like, a, this is a good section in the Bible to go over. Um, I will probably be going over this story a little bit more in another video, possibly, but um, for now I would just say that I read the book of Job as part of a, uh, it's called uh, Talmud study, uh, which means that I read some text in Jewish stuff and, and you do it as a group. And I uh, went over that and... I suggest so. It's called the Book of Job. It's it looks like it says Job, but it's actually Job. And now onto the books I actually have with me. So some of these books I've gotten from estate sales over the years, or specifically this year, I should say. Um, some of them I've gotten from friends, and some of them I just picked up off the shelf and read because maybe I was going to Florida or I was going somewhere on an airplane and need something to read. Uh, the first book. Some of these are nonfiction. Some of these are fiction. And each and every one of these five books, uh, except maybe one of them, I'm going to give her a, a, a five-star review for as well. So the first one is called Don't Let Jerks Get the Best of You, Advice for Dealing with Difficult People by Paul Meyer. I got this at an estate sale, and I can tell you that, um, you know, I feel like I've reviewed this book before. But, um, I do not remember, but it kind of has been a book that I've been reading over the course of a couple years now, I think, or maybe, uh, just, 
but I've definitely didn't finish reading it until this year. And I can tell you, it is very much a, uh, it has a lot of uh, religious undertones in it, which I didn't realize when I first bought it. Um, and if I haven't already said it already, this is definitely a book that you should check out, especially when you have a lot of people in your life that are toxic or who are frustrating. It, it, it kind of allows you to learn how to be better than them. But you just got to keep in mind that you, you do have to get past some of the religious undertones in this book. Now, it is nonfiction, but um, I would say that helpfulness-wise, it's definitely like a four and a half out of five. But I think because of the undertones in it, you have to give it a little bit of a lower score. But that's just a personal opinion. So I'd give it like a four out of five. Now for books that I know I haven't gone over. So this first book is called Undateable. And it's a book, this book is so old that it actually comes from Borders instead of Barnes & Noble. But I really never got around to reading it. And like now that I'm in a relationship and I've been in a relationship for several years, I'm like, well, what does this book hold up? Like, it's just been sitting on my shelf, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm arrogant enough, I, can, I could find someone. You know, I used to have that type of personality, I don't anymore, but... It basically shows two women's opinions of what men do that turn them off. And I, it's done more as a comedy than anything else, it's more like... Um, I'll, just to give you a couple examples, it's like, oh... Uh, sunglasses indoors or at night. Comedian Larry David put it best. You know who wears sunglasses inside? Blind people and a-holes. <laughs> and there's also like different categories. There's also like what to say, not to say like don't baby talk and don't, don't no come to papa, no bros before hoes, like that kind of stuff. Like it, it, these particular women are, are trying to speak for the entirety of women, which is why I don't think this book is that accurate. It's more for comedic effect. So, uh, depending on how you're viewing it, if you view this for comedic effect, it's hilarious. So, I'll give this one like a three and a half out of five. It's actually really funny. The authors are Ellen Rankatine and Anne Coyle. This next book is a Doctor Who episode that was aired in the 1980s. My friend Trevor gave me this book a while ago, and I've he's given me so many Doctor Who books that I just haven't had time to read all of them. This one's called The Happiness Patrol. My mom hates it. I love it. Difference of opinion, of course. Um, it definitely focuses on Thatcherism, the, where there is a colony where everyone has to be happy or they die. <laughs> I think it's a it's a it's a it's a weird concept, but like uh, there is also this one character, at least in the episode. In the book, he's not as he's not as present in the book. He's more present in the TV show, but uh, he's called the Candyman, spelled with a K. Um, he's I think they kind of dumbed it down for the book because he just wasn't really needed in the episode, but. You've, you've got the Doctor and Ace landing on um, a colony. I'm not sure what the colony... Oh, Terra Alpha. It says it right here. And basically, they have to show that, you know, there's nothing wrong with being sad. And there there isn't anything wrong with it. And, you know, sometimes we're all going to be sad sometimes. And I, I, I mean, it's so childish and simple and... and, and it, I, I can't understand that I know it's a bit corny, I know it's a bit cheesy, but I still can't understand how anyone can actually dislike this, because this is the simplest you can get when it comes to Doctor Who. It's a, a show that tends to be very com complex. Now, it's written by a guy named Graham Curry. Graham Curry, Graham Curry actually passed away this year. So, uh, rest in peace, Graham Curry. He passed away in March. So I think that's what prompted me to read the story. If I were to give the Happiness Patrol a um, rating, if I'm going off the book specifically, I'm going to give it a three and a half out of five. 
Um, I'm sure my mom would give it a bomb or a turkey or something because she really doesn't like this particular doctor or this particular story. But to each their own. It's my review, not hers. So I recently did this for uh, Agatha Christie uh, series that I'm doing. This is um, Dumb Witness, but it's uh, it's called here, it's called Poirot Loses a Client. And um, it is the same story, uh, just uh, the titles are different. And this is a book I read when I was going to Florida in October or November. And I couldn't put it, put, put it down. It wasn't the greatest... Agatha Christie, but it was one that kept me hooked the whole time, and um, if you want to hear more about this book, uh, you can probably check out the first episode I did in my Agatha Christie series uh, about Dumb Witness, because it is the same book. Um, you know, I can now confirm something real quick. So, yes, yeah, so Tanios is the, is the guy that I couldn't figure out the name of. And so Mr. and Mrs. Tanios are their names. So I couldn't figure out what the name was. There's also a couple doctors in this one I didn't mention as well. But, yes. So that is Poirot Loses a Client slash Dumb Witness. Uh, as I stated in my Agatha Christie video, I give this a three and a half out of five, and I think it's a pretty good Christie story. It's not the best, but it's it's good. And I think the one, not necessarily book, the one thing I really wanted to go over is something I've been putting on my Goodreads for a while, The Poetry of Robert Frost. I got this at an estate sale as well, and if you know me, you know that Robert Frost and Emily Dickinson are two of my favorite poets. Um, and I I read these. They're so deep. Um, here's one that I know Josh has already gone over called Mending Wall. That one's in here. There's also a couple of short stories. Well, they seem like short stories, but they're, they're still poetry. You know, it, it, it's really just a matter of opinion, what you want to call it. Um... So, a lot of really good poetry in here. You can also find really popular ones in here as well. I think the uh, Road Not Taken, which was the first ever Literary Gladiators episode, is in here somewhere. I just have to find it. But Robert Frost, if you're looking for more like poetry that is more detailed, like solidly. Robert Frost is definitely your guy. If you're looking for more poetry that's more... What's the word? Abstractly based off of issues, I suppose? Dickinson, I think, is is, is, all, is your better. But since I like both... But anyway, yes. Yeah, so, Robert Frost, definitely a poet worth checking out. I'm sure you have, but get this collection if you don't have it. it this one's an old version. I think this is like... What is the publishing date on this? It's, oh God, what is it? This is 1969. So this is an old one. But I am almost certain, and Josh, maybe you can confirm this with me, that there are later copyright dates than 69 for this book. Yeah? Yeah, okay. So there are definitely later copyright dates than 69. You could probably find something like this at Barnes & Noble. Um, but yeah. I'm not going to give a rating on this one because they're poets, poet, poems, and varied uh, ratings and stuff. But overall, Robert Frost is an excellent poet. Um, took me all year almost to get through that entire book. I think just uh, reading a couple poems a day is easier for me than, you know, going over a whole bunch of them at once. So it's kind of like those po poem a day calendars in a way. So those are uh, all the things that I can recall reading, e either finishing reading this year or that I started and finished this year. Um, there were a couple that I've been reading for a long period of time and just really got around to finishing it. With me, I'm the kind of person where uh, I will start reading a book 
put it down and then not pick it up for another couple weeks or a couple months or something. Um, but I usually don't start a new book. Um, so I'm a little bit of a slower, cozier reader. So that's why it sometimes takes me a little longer, but for each their own, you know, some people like to read books all at once. Now, uh, mysteries I tend to read all at once because you can't just let mysteries go, but other genres I can, I can if, as long as there's no deep, deep rooting story, if it's like nonfiction, it can hold off. So, I just want to let you know those are all the books I have read. 2019. For 2020, I've got a couple of books uh, listed that I'm looking forward to reading. Obviously, the first one being Through the Looking Glass by uh, Lewis Carroll, now that I see that I I have it. Number two is The Hollow by uh, Agatha Christie. I am actually just starting that one off. Um, there's going to be several Agatha Christie's, in fact, that I plan on reading um, during the beginning of the next year. So that should be interesting. And then um, there is another book that I I feel like I read it, but because I don't remember if I've read it, I'm going to read it again. I'm going to consider it brand new. Uh, it's called Planet of the Damned by Harry Harrison. I'm going to read that one as well. I know I've mentioned it to be a group video for Literary Gladiators, but perhaps it would be better if I did it as an individual. Um, and then there's some... Uh, I, I really want to review something by Isaac Asimov. So I might, um, not foundation, I mean something that we don't, that you guys probably don't know about. Um, I mean, my mom's actually met Isaac Asimov, so uh, it's a pretty, pretty neat thing if I could do one. So that's what I have on my list for 2020. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys have a good holiday season. I hope you guys had a good year. And may 2020 bring you the best in reading and the best in pretty much everything, obviously. And I will see you guys next time for Literary Gladiators. For now, keep reading and hope you enjoyed your year, your decade, and hope you enjoy your new year. Bye.